Welcome to the tutorial, Finally LLMs in .NET. Today we're diving into exciting updates for .NET developers. ML.NET now supports generative AI with a brand new library designed for large language models. If you've been waiting to bring the power of generative AI directly into your .NET applications, the wait is over. In this tutorial, we'll explain how ML.NET integrates seamlessly with some of the leading LLMs in the field, including Mistral 7 billion parameter model, Meta's Llama version 3.1 and 3.2, and Microsoft's own Pi models 2 and 3. Specifically, we'll focus on using the Mistral model to showcase how this works in practice. But that's not all. We'll also demonstrate how to leverage function calling, a powerful feature that can unlock advanced capabilities in your applications. Whether you're building chatbots, creating intelligent assistants, or enhancing productivity tools, this tutorial will give you the foundation to get started with generative AI and .NET. If you're excited about more tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated. So grab your keyboard, let's dive into the world of LLMs with .NET. Since we're using our GPU, head over to NVIDIA's developer portal and install the latest version of the CUDA toolkit. Next, you'll want to head over to Hugging Face website and download the Mistral model. Now we want to download one more model. BGEENICL. This model generates text embedding using few shot examples and leverages the in context learning capabilities of an LLM to produce high quality text embeddings. This model is based on the Mistral 7B. Now that we have the models, let's go over the examples. We've already coded the examples. Let's just execute them and see the results. Then we can walk through the code. There are three examples one showing a conversational system, and the other is using function calling. And the last one is the embedding model. There are a few packages we need to have before getting started. We need to install the autogen.core library. We can use the agents to communicate with our LLM, but we can also use the pipelines. And we will see both examples. Next, we need the Microsoft ML Gen AI Mistral. This package provides all the libraries we need to load the Mistral model. The Torch Sharp CUDA Windows is the package we will integrate with our CUDA drivers and load the model in the GPU. The Torch Sharp Hybrid is used when we're doing embedding. Let's go over the Mistral class. The constructor takes a few key parameters the path to the model, a configuration name, whether the chat should stream response or display the text only after it's completed, and finally, whether to use an agent or a pipeline. Next, we have the Mistral function call class, which is used when we need to call functions. The first step is setting up the Torch Sharp library to work with specific devices and data type, in our case, CUDA. Then we load the model and tokenizer, which are used to create our pipeline. From there, we decide whether to use an agent or the pipeline. The agent relies on autogen. We start by reading the command line for the user's query and checking if it's time to end the chat. If there's a query, we create a text message and a string builder to handle the Mistral response. If streaming is enabled, we call the agent streaming function, capture the response, and write it to the console. If streaming is off, we call the agent standard function, wait for the response, and then display it. In both cases, the model response is added to the list of messages which serves as the chat history. Using the pipeline gives us more control, but it requires us to manually create most of the objects. First, we need a class to generate the chat template for Mistral. This class handles converting our chat messages into Mistral's prompt format. From there, most of the process is similar to using the agent except for generating a response from Mistral. When generating a response, we pass in configuration values like the maximum length of the response, the temperature, and the stop token sequence. For function calls, loading PyTorch in the model works the same way as before, and we will still use the autogen agent. However, there's a new class involved, the function call middleware. This class allows us to provide a list of functions and a dictionary that maps function names to their corresponding wrapper functions. In our example, the function is getWeather, which simply returns a string. The schema is configured for JSON serialization and represents the function's parameters. The wrapper function is what gets called after we receive the response from Mistral. Lastly, there's the contract, which is used to send the function to Mistral. Next, we register the middleware with our agent. Once that's set up, we call the agent and pass in the user's query. The response includes the tool call 
and the output from function, as the middleware handles calling the function for us. Additionally, you can inspect the reply message to see the details of the interaction. Finally, we take the user original query and the agent's response, including the tool call, and create an assistant message, which Mistral uses to generate the final response. For embeddings, loading PyTorch is the same, but the process of loading the model is slightly different. First, we initialize a tokenizer, then we create a Mistral configuration and use it to instantiate a new Mistral model object. After that, we load the model checkpoint and map it to our GPU to ensure it runs efficiently. With the model loaded, we move on to creating our pipeline. Next, we have two queries prepared. One is commented out to demonstrate few shot usage, while the other doesn't, using any additional examples. We take our query and document and generate embeddings for both. Finally, we loop through the embedding and calculate the similarity score between the query and the document, which we print to the screen. That's it for this tutorial. Stay tuned for the next one where we will dive into using Llama 3.2 and train it on our custom data using .NET. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future tutorials like this. Thank you for watching.